Hey everyone, let's go ahead on this problem and let's do some mechanics and materials. So this one, we're going to be drawing the shear and bending moment diagrams for the beam with the loads shown. And we're gonna determine the max normal stress due to bending. And this problem, by the way, is number 5.25 out of the Beer uh, Johnston Solid Mechanics textbook, in case you're wondering where that came from. All right, so first of all, we're gonna do shear and bending moment diagrams. Now, in order to do those diagrams, I have to know what's going on here at C and B. All right, now C is like a roller, and then B is just uh, basically a support here. And notice this is an I-beam, like if we look down the side of the beam, that would be the shape that it would have. All right, so it's a W14 by 22. So let's go ahead and find C and B. Now, and to do that, let's draw a free body diagram. All right, so there's our beam, and let's go ahead and put the forces on here. So we got five kips here, and then at D, we've got 10 kips. C is a roller, right? So a roller is just gonna push this up, and I'm just gonna call it C, I guess. And then we've got B, okay, going up also. All right, and then let's put our distances. So we got five feet, we got eight feet, and five feet. All right, so let's go ahead. I need to find C and B. So I'm gonna start out with a moment equation because that will allow me to find one of these unknowns. So you can pick either point B or C. I'm gonna go ahead and pick point B. And counterclockwise will be positive. All right, so let's look at what we have for our moment equation. So here's B over here, and we're taking the moment. So let's look at this five kip force. So if I'm pushing down this way, that is a counterclockwise rotation, so it's gonna be positive. And the distance, I need to go from here over to here. So five plus eight plus five, so what is that, 18? And then let's do C. So C, I'm pushing up, all right, so it's a clockwise rotation, so it's negative. And then the distance, I need to go from C over to B. So eight plus five, so 13. And then finally, we've got this 10. So again, we push down, rotates counterclockwise, so it's positive. And that distance, I need to go from here to here, so five. Okay, and that's all we've got in that equation because B goes straight through that point that we're taking the moment about, so we don't have to worry about that. So only unknown here is C, so I can solve for C. And we get 10.8 kips, okay? Now we gotta find B. So you can do this one of two ways. You could do another moment equation about point C. That would allow you to find B, or you could just do the summation of the Y forces, which I'm gonna do that, because I think it's a little easier. All right, so negative five, because it's going down, plus C. We already know the value of C though, right? 7.8 minus 10 and then plus B because it's going up. So now B is the only unknown we can solve. We get 4.2 kips. Now we've got our external supports found. So now we can go ahead and find our shear moment diagrams and then we'll be able to find the max normal stress due to bending. Now, when we do these shear and moment diagrams, we always want to draw out another free body diagram on top of where we're gonna do the shear and moment diagrams. That way we can line everything up and see what's going on. Okay, so we got five kips up here, 10 kips, and then we wanna put the forces due to the supports. All right, so here at C, it was 10.8, and then over at this end, B was 4.2 kips. And then we definitely want to put our distances on this one. Right. And obviously this isn't to scale. Okay, now we're ready to do our shear diagram. So let's do that first. So we're gonna line it up right below this free body diagram. All right, and units here will be kips. All right, so you always wanna put your units on the diagram that way everybody knows what the value is. Now let's go ahead and look. So when we're doing this shear diagram, I care about the forces that we have acting on the beam. All right, now remember if we have loads that are 
pushing down, we're going to have a downward jump on the diagram. When we have forces pushing up, we're going to have an upward shift on the diagram. All right, so starting at the left, I'm pushing down five kips. So I'm going to jump down to negative five right here. And then there's nothing right here, right? This is just the beam. There are no forces on here. So that means that shear's not going to change. But then when we get to C, I've got this force here, right? And this is pushing up. So I need to jump up by 10.8. Okay, well that's going to take me to 5.8. Okay, now we don't have anything in here, right? It's just the beam. So this is just going to be constant until we get to this 10 kip force. Now the 10 kip force is going down, right? So where should we go now? Well, we're going to drop down, right? Because downward force, downward shift. And the 10 is kind of like our delta. Okay, so we're going to basically do um, 5.8 minus 10, which is going to take us down to negative 4.2. Okay, and then nothing in here, right? So it's just constant. And then we've got an upward force which conveniently is 4.2, right? Takes us back to the x-axis. So we should always end up back at the x-axis um, when we do these diagrams. And that's what it looks like. All right. So the benefit of this diagram is we could figure out what the shear is at any point along the beam, right? So if I want to know what the shear is, you know, two feet from the left side, I can look at this diagram and say, oh, it's five, right? We know the, the sign, or not the sign, but we know the value of the shear and everything like that. Okay, so now let's do the moment diagram. And units here will be uh, kips feet. So we got that. And for the moment diagram, we're mainly going to focus on the shear diagram, but we do want to look up here and make sure we don't have any applied couple moments or anything like that. So we only have forces applied here, so I don't need to really use this um, diagram too much anymore. We're going to mainly focus on the shear diagram. Okay, so what we're going to do to get the moment is we're going to be looking for the areas. Whoops, sorry about that. We're going to be looking for the areas under or above this shear curve. So let's kind of write out these little numbers so I can put the ex explanation over here. So let's look at this little region one. All right, so this is region one. So I want to find this area, okay? And then that'll help me get my delta M for the uh, moment diagram. So how would we calculate area here? Well, I know this length here is five, right? Because we're going down five. And I know this length is five from right here, okay? So I'm just gonna have five times five, which is 25. And that is a delta M, okay? So it's a delta M. So that means if we line up this point here, we're gonna be at negative 25. And I have to figure out how to go between 0 and negative 25. Like, what would the line look like? All right, well, anytime we've got a constant here, like this is constant, it doesn't change, we're going to have a linear function in the M diagram. All right, so we've got that. And that's going to be our line for that section of the moment diagram. Okay, so now we're going to jump up here, figure out our next section. So this is section two. I want to find this area. Okay, so the height here is 5.8. The length here is going to be 8 from right here. So we're just going to have 5.8 times 8, and that is 46.4. Remember, that is delta M. Okay, so that means what we're going to do is we're going to do 46.4 minus 25. And that's going to take me to 21.4. Okay, so let's put that right here. So we got 21.4, and 
And I know this is going to have to go up with a positive slope because this is positive v. All right, down here we had a negative v, so we got this negative slope on that linear function. This is a positive v, so we're going to have a positive slope. All right, so now we've got that. And then last one, let's do section three here. So same thing, we just want to find the area of this shaded region. Okay, so this is going down 4.2. This length here is 5 from right there. So we do 4.2 times 5. We get 21. That's our delta M. All right, so again, remember that's a change in M. So that means we're starting at 21.4. This is going to have a negative slope, right? It's got to go down because it's negative V. So we're going to subtract 21. And that's going to give me approximately zero. All right, my rounding was a little off somewhere, um, but that'll take us to zero. Okay, and then that will be our moment diagram. Okay, and if you need more information on how to do these diagrams, um, I have more detailed shear and moment diagram examples on YouTube. Okay, but now we've got this. So now that we have our moment diagram, we can work on finding the max normal stress due to bending. So let's write out the equation for normal stress due to bending. Okay, so it's going to be MC over I. And a lot of the books have a ratio for this CI, and we will put it as S. Okay. Now, if I'm wanting to find the max, Let's write max here. If I want to find the max stress, what size moment should I use? Should I use the minimum moment, max moment? What do we think? Well, we're going to use the max moment, right? And we don't care about the negative. We want the absolute value here. So we just want the biggest value on this diagram because that's our max moment. And that will help us get this max bending stress. So our max moment will be 25. All right, so we got that. And then I need to worry about finding um, this ratio S. Okay, now this ratio S we can easily find in one of the appendices in the back of the book. And we can do that because if you remember, we have this uh, dimension given to us, right? We have the type of beam given to us. So all of the textbooks for solid mechanics have these appendices. So if you look in the appendix, you can find um, that value. So this is the appendix from the Hibbler book. This is just the one I had at home. Um, but if you look, they'll all be about the same. So here is SS, not SS, it's on the XX axis, and then S. All right, so we're going to use this one, and then notice W14 by 22. So we have 29. Okay. Notice the units here is inches cubed, okay? And we're going to use the x-axis -x -axis because that's what the bending is about. We're not bending about the y-axis, so we would want to use that 29, okay? So that's going to be in the appendix. And like I said, that was the Hibbler appendix. Um, I think it's appendix C for the Beer Johnston book that this problem came out of. I just don't have a hard copy of that one at home with me. Okay, so S is going to be 29 inches cubed, and we'll just put from appendix. Okay, and then now we just need to plug everything in. Okay, so this equation right here. All right, so our max moment is 25. That's kip feet, and then S, which goes in the denominator, is 29 inches cubed. So now you're left with figuring out what units you want to use. Do we want to stick with feet or cubic inches? This one here is going to be easier to convert, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to convert the feet to inches up top. Right. So now we're ready to solve. So our max uh, normal stress due to bending is going to be 10.34 and that's kip per square inch, so KSI. All right.
So now you've got that max normal stress due to bending. So on these problems like this, most of the time you're going to do these shear moment diagrams. All right, and then that's going to allow you to find your max moment or the moment at a certain point. Um, and then you can use it in your equation. Okay, so hopefully you found that one helpful. And I hope you all have a great rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time.